why isn't creativity and struggle already celebrated in schools? And this brings me to my next point. There's always three points. I'll give you the second one. So it's about moving from the oppressed to becoming the oppressor. And let me explain, because you might be wondering what, what kind of oppression, like, come on, we're not oppressed, we're free. We can, we can do what we need, right? There's no oppression to speak of. <laughs> Well, Sir Ken Robinson spent much of his life sharing the message that schools kill creativity. I'm hoping to use my life to look at ways that we can bring creativity back in. You ever wonder why we still use standardized tests today? I mean, researchers have known that 70 to 80 percent of the score that you get on a test depends on your household income. And many employers have already stated that they don't care about your grades. So why do we keep using this super antiquated system? Well, in the late 1960s, Brazilian philosopher Paulo Freire completed the now famous book Pedagogy of the Oppressed while in political exile himself. In the book, he argued that education was itself a system of oppression designed to keep people at roughly the same income level. Now, if we think about education from this perspective, of empire expansion, right? Like so long, long time ago, we're talking about like, oh, I'm trying to expand my empire. The goal there had been to get large numbers of people to conform to the norms of society using something known as the banking model of education. And what it means is that like, imagine each student is kind of like a, like a bank account and you're, you're making deposits of knowledge. Uh, using that model kind of assumes that, well, it's the teacher that has all the knowledge and, you know, you as, as students are, are just like sponges that needed to be filled. Uh, and really, like a lot of his book is, is saying that this environment, like in this particular type of environment of colonialization, curiosity is it's discouraged because it leads to questioning the system. Why are things the way that they are right now? In the same way, creativity is discouraged because it leads ultimately to movements. And there's another word for movements in politics. It's called rebellion, rebelling. Ferreri argued that the outcome of creativity is a movement that rebels against the status quo. Now, this doesn't have to be at an epic scale. Like, it does not have to be at the, oh, I'm changing society level. No. It can even be within our own families. So, let me tell you another story. So, a number of years ago, I had a chance to work with Mei Wang. And she is a researcher um, and a professor at the University of Calgary's Computer Science Department. And we were running an event called Technovation. And so Technovation is this uh, e event focused on girls who are the last year of high school and the first year of university, trying to encourage them to consider computer science as a minor. So at the end of this program, you know, we, we hosted this Ask Me Anything with one of the senior female developers at the company that I worked at. And the questions themselves were quite revealing. 
One question that we heard over and over and over again was, well, my mom says that I shouldn't take computer science because they don't talk to anyone. They just like sit alone coding by themselves. They don't talk to anybody. They just sit alone, right? They just code all day long. That's what computer scientists do, right? Well, I mean, in this case, her mom wasn't a coder. So how would she know what that career is like? The career of a computer scientist? How would she know what a computer scientist is like? Her mom, I want to be clear, like her mom isn't trying to be cruel. This is a perfectly natural fear response to something that we don't yet understand. But when we look at the pioneers of computer science, many of our heroes in the field are women, uh, including, and, and this is no, not a complete list by any means, Ada Lovelace, first programmer, Grace Hopper, Rear Admiral Grace Hopper, Anita Borg, some of the early programming languages, just to name a few. Coding is more than just talking to computers. It's connecting with the deep needs of people, right? If you look at all the, the, the biggest social media platforms, it is about figuring out how people want to connect and making it easier for them to do that, maybe in a new way, in a different way. Many of us today were where we are because we rebelled against the status quo. We are exactly that. And we often say that every creative rebellion has four different phases. The, the first phase is they, they laugh at you, right? Ha, come on, seriously, computer science this is ridiculous. The next is they get angry at you because you're still doing it. Like, man, like they're still pursuing this. This is ridiculous. Like, how can you, how can you, like, I already told you why you shouldn't do it. And then the third is they, they give up on you. They say, ah, oh, forget it. This person's a lost cause. And then fourth, finally, they start to admire you. And they want to be like you. And they're like, you're an inspiration. How can we be more like, more like you? Don't give up on your dreams. They may just become the movement that no one expected, but everyone needed, right? You can be the movement. You can start the movement that no one expected, but everyone needs. Now, there's a fifth. Surprise, there's a fifth and darker phase. And that phase is, well, Number five, you succeed. And now you become the oppressor, which is exactly the title. You go from being the oppressed to being the oppressor. Think about it. Amazon, what did they do? They rebelled against the retail system. And now they have become the oppressor. Uh, controlling many of the products that we can buy today. Social media. Social media rebelled against traditional media. And now they have become the oppressor for how we spend a lot of our free time. And in the same way, this is not just companies, children <laughs> rebelled against their parents. Right? <laughs> And now they have become the oppressor for their kids' future aspirations. Uh, and I want to say, like, nobody's trying to be mean here. Nobody's trying to hurt somebody else. Uh, this creative destruction is just a natural process of growth. Einstein said that we can't solve our problems with the same thinking that we used when we created them.
We can't solve our problems with the same thinking that we used when we created them. We have to change our thinking.